Rubber's behavior depends on mode of deformation. For example, the fatigue curve for simple tension is different from the fatigue curve for simple shear, simple compression, or equibiaxial tension. You need critical plane analysis to make sense of deformation mode effects in fatigue. Critical plane analysis checks how an oriented crack develops under a given deformation history. Each potential orientation has a unit normal vector. We compute fatigue life for each orientation and color the tip of each vector, red for short life, blue for long. Once we complete the process for all possible crack orientations, we end up with a damage sphere. The damage sphere shows which crack orientation will initiate first for the given loading history. Let's take a look at what critical plane analysis tells us about some common deformation modes. First, simple tension. The unit cube stretches in the z direction. The x and y directions are free. Intuitively, we expect that cracks initiate perpendicular to the stretch direction. We see this on the damage sphere by the fact that the critical plane normal vector is oriented along the z axis. Now let's look at simple compression. The unit cube is compressed in the z direction. Again, the x and y directions are free. In simple compression, no matter what orientation you pick, no crack experiences mode 1 opening. Instead, crack closure occurs on the crack with normal in the z direction, and no load occurs on any crack with a normal perpendicular to the z direction. Cracks can grow in shear, however. Critical plane analysis identifies all planes on which the shearing is maximized. These planes all make the same angle with the z-axis, roughly 45 degrees. Equibiaxial tension has the same deformation mode as simple compression, but the stress state adds a tensile hydrostatic pressure. In this case, the unit cube stretches equally in the x and y directions, and the z-direction is free. We see from the damage sphere that all planes having a normal vector perpendicular to the z-axis are critical planes. Cracks are equally likely to occur in any of these orientations. In planar tension, the unit cube is stretched in the z-direction, while deformation in the y-direction is prevented. The x-direction is free. As with simple tension, the damage sphere shows that the critical plane has its normal in the z-direction. In simple shear, the bottom face of the unit cube is fixed. The top face is displaced in the x direction, but fixed in the y and z. The damage sphere here shows that the critical plane occurs with an angle of about 45 degrees from the yz plane about the y-axis. So far, we're, we've held constant the mode of deformation while we cycle deformation magnitude. Let's look at what happens when both the deformation mode and magnitude vary. In this case, there is no consistent max principal strain direction, which raises questions and causes problems if you try to relate back to a fatigue curve that was generated under a constant principal direction. But critical plane analysis works well here because it explicitly considers in detail the local loads experienced by each possible crack orientation. Critical plane analysis works as well when mode of deformation is changing as it does when mode of deformation is constant. Here's the bottom line. Max principal strain or stress can correlate to fatigue life for some simple cases, but they break down as a general purpose rule if crack closure occurs or if the mode of deformation or principal directions are varying. Critical plane analysis is the general purpose rule that works every time. If this video has earned it, give us a like. We'll be adding more videos, so subscribe if you want to keep tabs on us. Thank you.